G'day and welcome to Off Grid Earth. Today we're in Western Australia at a place called Durian Bay. I've got Tristan and Shiner with me and they are off gridders with an awesome project to talk about. So I've been really excited today. They've been showing us around and we're going to share a bit with you guys. Thanks for having us. No problem. Pleasure having you. We just rocked up and these are the coolest guys. What we're doing here is going off grid in an earth ship and we're going to get to that in a moment. But guys, you started off living in the shed. Yep. And so this is, this is what we call in our terms a shouse. I love it. I yep. love the shouse. <laughs> yeah, the shouse is good. And so the shouse fits down under here, but you've got heaps of storage. Tell us a bit more about what you started here with the shed and a bit more about your plans with the, with the, the big job outside. Yeah, well, the shed was um, to survive the build Lasting. and we needed a workshop. To build a yeah. house, you need a workshop. You need a workbench. Um, you need space. You need space. You need indoor, out of the wind space. <laughs> and this shed does it. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and so... Uh, you've got your off grid on the roof. You've got about six kilowatts of solar. Yep. Uh, we've got a sunny island uh, controller over there with a 5,000 TL and an LG Chem battery, and that's been doing the job for you for the last few years. Doing just just right. Yeah. Interesting. And interesting little setup that one. Yeah. And it should do both the house and, and the house. And the house. Yeah. So we don't need any solar panels on the house. That's the. Um, yeah, that's the plan. Yeah, that's what we'd like to have: no solar panels on the house and just keep it all on the shed. And you're pretty frugal in your power needs, aren't you? So. Well, we just have to re, just re-establish when we do things. So instead of, you know, like doing washing at night, we do it first thing in the morning when the sun's up and we've got full power. Yep. So it's just re, re-assessing how you, exactly. how you live. And how, yeah. much, and how much power and you use like, at night. That's all you really need to worry yeah. about. Well, yeah. For us. Adapting, you're being in synergy with, with your son. Yeah. That's and it. that's great because yeah. it, it, does, it works out brilliantly because... You just respect everything. You've got more va- You've got more respect and more value for the system. Oh, this one. This is- Check out this fella. Check out the. the gl- you oh, could he's, have to- he's gone. <laughs> yeah. You could have to. What happens if I chuck it here? Yeah, it'll come in. <laughs> he's really, really bright here, and he's got pink. He's got a pink eye. Yeah, yeah. he's got no pigmentation in his left eye. So sit down. Sit. Sit. Very Good boy. To- so he doesn't get. So- he doesn't get ball until he's got glasses on. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Oh, yeah. Mr. Hobbs. Yeah. Mr. Hobbs. <laughs> Mr. Hobbs in the glasses. So, so under here, you basically got your bedroom, a little living area, your toilet, and that's keeping you comfortable yeah. for now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's a bit warm in the summer and a bit cold in the winter because we've got no, um, no heating mm. to really talk about in here. Well, these guys may be running a bit rough now, but they're working on a really amazing project. And, and the project really is their baby, and they're really passionate about it. And since... We've been here, I'm really passionate about it as well because we love telling these stories. This thing is so cool. So let's go and check out the Earthship under construction. This is a, a, quite an interesting part of WA. It's like really windy. It's seemingly really dry. There's like coastal heat. There's lots of wildflowers. It's quite beautiful in its own way. But why why choose here to build this? I <laughs> had a friend up in Onslow who bought a place in Durian Bay and said you should be looking at Durian Bay. There's there's blocks in Durian Bay and it's and it's happening. So we had a look on Google Air, and um, this place was available. So we we um, it was a bank repossession. So we uh-huh. said, oh, we'll try, we'll put in for it. So it's like, trying to like the, all the angles of the block. It's 20 acres, but it's in a kind of triangle shape. And I was more like, I prefer right angles. Like, but Shana was, no, it's definitely this block. So it was just like, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll put in a bid for this block. So we put in a bid for this block and um, they rang back and said, I'm sorry, it's been sold. So we actually, for a couple of weeks, we thought we'd, we'd lost it and we'd kind of, well, not forgotten about it, but, we certainly weren't looking for anything else. And then the guys rang up and said, um, actually, the, the sale's fallen through. Are you still interested? And it was kind of like, uh, oh, if that's not a sign, I don't know what is. Just 
So yeah, up, so that's it? what we did. So we so we bought yeah, this place. Right. And we had the idea we were going to build nerd ship. That was that happened way back in Sydney. How many years ago? Twelve. Yeah. Twelve years ago. Yeah. We had right, an so idea this, this, this has been building. The yeah. yeah we, this is a long time. Coming. Yeah. Yeah. We watched Garbage Warrior, a movie by Michael Reynolds, who's the creator um, of Earthships. Right. And um, it was yeah, just, it was like doing. a dream. It yeah. was just like we'd Whoa. love to build yeah, one of those. That. Build a house that doesn't need to be heated or cooled, so that. Um, in later years, if we were to still have it in retirement, we'd have very, very little bills. And, and there's no point in building building a place um, when you've then got to go and work to pay bills to keep it up and running. So during Bay then, you made your selection, you got down here, you had the block happened to have water views from where you yeah, are. We yeah, no yeah we didn't that. know that. And we didn't actually accidental, know that. Accidental water views. So the Shire, once you contacted them, they were quite engaging and favourable to the idea. Yes, they were awesome. Yeah. Which, yeah. which potentially in a different trial or another council might not have been the case. That's true. Okay, that that's true. great. That's it. So it's yeah. quite well. So those yeah. things all coming together meant that's why we're here now. That's yeah, it. yeah that's it. You now, what is an earth ship? Okay, well, an earth ship is basically very hard to explain because they come in so many different forms. But the main idea is that they work in conjunction with the uh, natural, well, the environment. So these houses, so in the northern hemisphere, they have to face south, and in the southern hemisphere, they have to face north. We've always got to have sun coming into the house because it's the sun which cools the place and also heats the place in the um, in the winter. So it takes out your air conditioning and any heating that you need for the um, for the winter. Mm -hmm. So your bills are minimal. That's, and it uses rubbish that's the to build idea. it. Yeah, and so quite often it's recycled yeah. materials. Yeah, and, Look, and, and tires, it, yeah. tires, which and, just get dumped. And in so really, it's a, it's a, it's almost like its own living organism in the way that it, it's you know the way that it exists in the earth, isn't it? You well, know? it is. Yeah, I, I mean, we use our our water up to well, it can be used up to four times yeah, um, from incredible. coming in through the Either through the bore or off rainwater, going down into the um, into the planter, so you're growing stuff off it, and then yeah. the planter also purifies the water back at the other end of the planter, in which case you can suck it out and reuse it for for other things. We're, that's yeah. the preference. And so, and you yeah. guys, you guys had to obviously these are often made with recycled materials. Now putting it through a council and doing it in this format, this yeah. is sort of like a this is like the the modern. You know, it adheres to the, stand, the, the standards build for an earth ship, meaning that you, you weren't able to do use as many recycled materials as you otherwise might have liked, and, and things like that. Yeah. But you've you're achieving your own version of what an earth ship looks like under those rules, aren't you? It was so. What an earth ship will look like um, following the codes of Australia building. There you go. And that's yeah, it. Yeah. So you can still you can still get an earth ship um, within the codes, um, mm. but it's it's not as um, I suppose as pure yeah. as as a as a, yeah. as a as a full earth ship. Yeah. But saying that, if you build it to code, you build it really strong. It will yeah. last and last. And, and it has last. its own level of distinction. So, I mean, have a look. This isn't finished, of course, and it's going to be amazing once it's finished. But you start to get a feel for the, the size and the space in here, and maybe we should talk about some of the some of the features and and how this actually works. So. This rendered wall behind here, uh, Tristan and Shiner were describing how they were a little bit sad because for a long time this was just a um, tyre wall, big four-wheel drive tyres, yeah. and, uh, and that's got rammed earth inside the tyres, yeah. and they were in love with their, with their wall, and then one day they had to cover it all up and they never see their tyres again. But explain a little bit more to us. You're able to pick up, this is one part that is recycled, because it was recycled tyres. Tyres, yeah. And, yeah. and this has formed a really strong earthen wall which then is actually maintaining the thermal mass on the cool side. That's you know, it. Yeah. Remains a cool, it's yeah, a cool wall. It stabilizes, yeah, it stabilizes the temperature. It's just, Come it's, in close. The idea that it's, it's because the thermal mass, there's, um, it, it'll, it'll hold a ground temperature mm. or a stable temperature. Mm. Um, and so, so, yeah, so that, 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 that would be two feet through, two, two foot Yeah, feet. well, yeah, four wheel drive tyres. So they're, they're um, I can't remember the exact size. It was like two seven two, three, five. We had started two, off at two seven five at the at the bottom, yeah. then worked our way smaller as we two, went up. Two three five, yeah. And, and, and they all lean back. back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that leaning back is just is to create this stability, the structural integrity. Yeah. So it's, so it's leaning into the burn. Yeah, leaning into yeah, the burn. Leaning yeah. into the burn. Yeah. yeah. 
And so then it's how many layers of render? This is your second layer, isn't it? You've got another one to yeah, go on. Yeah, we've got one no, more. We, yeah, this is the third. We did third. do it in grey yeah. um, initially because we had some bad weather come in and there was no roof on it. Right. And so because we had adob adobe it, we didn't want it all to wash away. So we put a light grey render on yeah. top of it and then we've done two. Um, That's it. <laughs> that. you mean, yeah, so we filled this wall. So before it was rendered, we filled this wall with mud, um, adobe. adobe. So it's, yeah. mud, it's mud and clay. Yeah, um, yeah mud, clay and straw. Mm. And, and old bricks, because they typically use cans or any rubbish to, to fill the voids. But because we got bricks for free, we just used bricks in the wall. So we had all this mud brick in the wall, and then we had this biggest downpour of rain, and it just started flooding it out. So we were, was, hard work. Yeah, there was a bit of a panic. We didn't have our cream cement yet, so we got the had grey cement, and we had to put a very thin layer of grey cement render on it just to hold all the mm -hmm. mud so there's back. chicken mesh on yeah. there as well, yeah. which yeah. obviously holds the render to it. Yeah. So. And so on top of here, you'll have then some some straw bales that'll be going in. Yeah, so straw bale wall at the top, but um, it's we're going to be using um, straw like clay, so we can pack the straw in, and then it'll it'll um, it will form a solid wall. Yeah. Really. So there's a, so you have this mould. Yeah. And the mould sits here, and then you you, you pack this the straw like straw clay, clay in that in, way into yeah. it, and it yep. creates that. And, and then you might have some window, which is. Windows are unusual in that in the back part of an earth ship. Yeah. Yes. May or may not include some. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Because okay. at the moment we're we're, we're looking at uh, the the plans do have windows, but we're looking at if we have the, the window up there, we're just going to see the bottom of the gutter. Yeah. So yeah, we're yeah. still. What's what's maybe not. Yeah. Once at every stage. Goes on, how much yeah. light is going to come through it, and is yeah. it just something else we've got to yeah. clean, or do yeah. we close it in, and then we've got the, the internal wall to be able to use yeah. that space for storage or for whatever. Mm -hmm. And if it's than... yeah, and if it's going to cause problems with um, the plans and the shy, then we'll just chuck windows in. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah so, so the ber the berm the the, the the construction of where this is sitting itself, where the slab is actually sitting, yeah. is sitting on. Um, and some elevated ground here. This has got yeah. some fill. extra fill, fill in, and yeah. it's been compressed in compacted. quite heavily, yeah. compacted. Yeah. compacted. And there's also a lot of rock that came out of this ground here, out of the out of the cut. Yeah. And then that is creating the berm, and, and and it's quite different the way that you're actually drawing the air into the earthship. So the earthship breathes by air that's effectively pushed into the space and drawn through the space from the prevailing winds on the outside. Yeah, that's it. And you have put them in a different format than otherwise would be the case with the pipes sort of all in one spot yeah. rather than along the wall. And, and the reason you did that was because of the prevailing winds. Just to face area. the wind, yeah. Yeah, just to get so southwesterly yeah. is our predominantly our main wind. Yes. So we wanted them facing in that yeah. direction so that we could get the, the yeah. best of the wind. Can you imagine, so, imagine where we were standing in there having a conversation we're, we're probably what six, five meters from that point from here, yeah. from the bottom. That that is the, and it's also white. This the rock that's come out of the ground here, is is white. Yeah. So it's reflective, yeah, which is helpful. It. Yeah. And it's also good for um, erosion as well. Stop the erosion of the. So and so come along here and show us how these work. So this these pipes then come, yeah, so coming into room, each of these spaces. Each room has a um, air tube. And, um, that, that one's yeah, so you can feel a really, it's, it's cool, cooler, it? it's cooler yeah. air, it's really breezy coming out, I mean obviously we don't have Felotron here, but that's blowing, and this is an open space and you can really feel the air blowing into there, so, so that air feeds into here, on this, on the front here is glass, and that has, and the sun comes through that glass. And in, in winter, the sun comes further back into the space, so it creates thermal load, heating up the, the concrete. It help, warms the space in winter. Yeah, that's and it. the these pipes can be sealed off so that it lets less cooler air in. And the whirly birds, which you're proposing to have on the roof to draw the, the warm the, air, the warm air out of the space, can also be controlled. So in summer they might be fully open, it's drawing all this cool air into the space. Yep. And in, in the winter they can be controlled so that the air space can warm up effectively. So, and, and so by temperature controlling like that and using this thermal load, yep. no air conditioning required, no, no nothing. It's just a living, breathing space. But being summer, the light doesn't penetrate yeah, the house that so far. It's only going to be here in summer and in winter yep. it'll be up most of the way back into the building. Yeah. So way back into here potentially. And then that means that this slab slab can be heating and picking up that thermal load so it's just 
it's just such an amazing way and and it's really it's simple it's really simple isn't it yeah. and, and so and if you're wondering what this is all about guys tell us what this bit here is all for so this is a uh, planter so um we're going to be growing um, fruits and vegetables in here um this planter can accept water from uh, the grey water so from our showers or from the um Washing machine. From the washing um, machine. That goes into a filter bed down yep. underneath. Yeah, yep. yep. so that just it. filters down. Yeah, so the, yeah. And that's, so that's going to hold a fair volume of water. That's good. Yeah. So there's a lot yeah. of water that can go in there. Huge. And so this has just got a soil medium or a rock medium, which so, is. Yeah, that, rock. Yeah, rock. And it's got a clay in there so it will hold the water. Um, and then we've got uh, we've got a it's, sand. It's like a beach sand at the yeah. moment. Yeah. So the water will filter through all of that. And we'll actually have sawdust in there as well because yeah. we use the leader method rather than having dirt. So you can imagine you're walking out, you're walking out into this area, and you've got all these amazing plants that are food production, straight from your kitchen, out here. Pick, pick your herbs, pick your fruits and vegetables, all grown in this enclosed environment, taking nutrients from your grey water that's coming out of your kitchen, out of your showers, and you, you're closing the loop. I mean, if this isn't the ultimate in off-grid, I don't know what is. So even these structural beams, these guys have been become master welders here, Shiner. Yeah, Shiner, yes. Shiner can weld. Uh, yeah, I've learned. I've learned. And so you, at the moment, so some of the amazing features here is that you have the ability to bend the, the corrugation at 120 degrees. Yeah. yeah. And, oh. and it looks really neat. Yeah. So that's one piece of uh, steel there that's coming over this angle and yep. under, so you can't, can't see quite it. see it because you've been no, lying you here. Yeah. If you've got an off cut anywhere, you might have a look at an off cut, yeah. it might yeah. be worth it. Yeah, so the, so yeah, the form the flow, yeah. Form, yeah. Form, form flow, the, the form guys. Form flow have done that, which is yeah. really, that's a new innovation. You're, yeah. you're basically the first one to get that angle too. Yeah, yeah, yeah we were. Well, yeah. Really we're very cool. Fortunate. 90 degrees is what they've done um, in Melbourne and Adelaide and yeah, 120 degrees we needed for this. Yeah. Wow. And so. All of this will be lined with um, insulation and then laid again with corrugation underneath as, as a feature right through. So it's insulated on top. There'll be storage up here, basically as a, as a mezzanine, like an attic, if you want to call it that, because yeah. there'll be an internal roof in the rooms. Yeah. Yeah, so this, right. this, for instance, is a bathroom. Yeah, then you've got kitchen yes. and, and living, living areas that are going to have engagement with this space. But under the standard, which is interesting, this area from here out is actually declared an outdoor space, is that That's right? That's it, yeah. yeah, to get it past code, um, this had to be an outdoor space. So it means that we've got double glazed windows on the inside. So that's the downside to doing everything um, properly, mm. legally. Mm. You, you've got to jump a few, few well, things. I mean, obviously those standards sometimes might throw out things in terms of innovation. It's even better, you know, new, well, new ways of doing it because it forces it. you down a particular path that you otherwise wouldn't go down. So let's talk a bit more about this area here as well. Obviously, this is going to be big sections of glass, and, and then yep. and then every second or third area here will have will have like louvered. a louvered window. Yeah. yeah, so half of it will be a louvered window. Yep. So so that we can open them up and let more air in or less air in. This, however, it's however, it's going to be it an incredible feature. You know, just this this massive glass too, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And so the, the the garden that you grow in here can grow right up yeah. Yeah. to the light. Well, we're hoping to have, I'd love to see a banana tree in there. I think you're yeah. going to have a banana tree for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so good, so good. Okay, so um, the, the living areas themselves are all, so you've got your, your kitchen, a couple of bedroom areas, a study. Yeah. And then and down the end you've got your... Um, guest bedroom with ensuite. Guest bedroom, ensuite, and then and a, and a carport coming yeah, in on the end. Yeah, there. yeah, that's it. So it's a, a full and proper home, and it is going to be run, fingers crossed, by the existing off-grid system as well, because That's you've it. got pretty frugal power needs. That's it. So the power needs, we just drop all, drop all of our power needs. We mm. don't need, you don't need too much power. I mean, TV. Heating, heating and cooling are out. Yeah, so yeah. TV, LED lights, mobile phone, water, laptop. Water pump. Yeah, water pump. Yeah, pressure pump. And that's, I mean, we're not pumping that much water. No. So. And so one of the really cool things um, Tristan was telling us about here was the ability to to switch inside the bathroom itself <laughs> whether the water goes to grey water or to black water. Obviously they've, they've got a normal black water waste system for all the black water and then the grey water is largely going to be used in the, um, the garden area here in the, in the farm 
but at times you might not want to use that grey water. It might be too full or something, and you yeah. can just have a. There's a diversion valve down here where they can divert it away to the. Yeah. The black so the, water so, so the whole system. the whole place it can can just be on septic, but then if we decide to or choose to, we can run the washing machine or the shower to the to the grey plant. Bit of a grey area. <laughs> You know, it, it, all these closed loops, all these mechanisms, you know, they need to happen. You know, and, and, and having a living home, I mean, you've got all your power, you've got all your needs right here. What, what, what do you need from the outside? You need a connection to, to for phone calls. Yeah, that's it. Is that it? Yeah, mobile phone now. We don't even have a landline to no. the block. No. I don't think you need it. Well, we don't, we don't even have the NBM, we just use a hotspot on our Oh, yeah, oh, no, but we got we got a yeah, uh, tower telephone tower. towers, like, dead straight so in the like, so we, they're not, they're not fully off grid. No, you've no, got, well, this, you've you've got connect. some sort of connection. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, connect. There's so much going on here that, um, you know, it, 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 we definitely haven't covered it all. But guys, are there, are there other key innovations in what you've done here that are worth talking about and telling people about? Because I feel as though we've, we've covered off the generals, but there's just so many bits and pieces that I'm sure that you could tell us. What, what are the hints and tips, maybe? Um, have a good marriage. Yeah. Both have the same dream. Yeah, both have the same dream. Good. Yeah. yeah, okay. So yeah. The, so you have the passion, both yeah. have a shared passion. Yeah. yeah. Is this is this type of build going to be any more expensive than, than building a house of a similar size in the normal format? No, it won't be it won't be more expensive if you do a lot of it yourself. yourself. Yeah, that's it. If we had tradesmen coming in all the time, um to do this. Yeah, it, I, I think it would have Especially the location because it's difficult to get, um, and it's so different as well, isn't it? It's yeah, different from it's normal people building. taking a risk as well to build something yeah. um, different than the normal. But yeah, it, you we, know, we, we could have gone to Perth, got a modular home, got them to truck it up here, and probably be it'll be cheaper. But yeah, then you've got a modular been. home that doesn't cool itself, doesn't heat itself, is miserable in the summer unless the aircon's on, and is built. That, it's, that, it's, that, it's not our dream, yeah, is it? It's, it's not, not how we wanted to see a really building. Yeah. Mm. We wanted to live in something that was a, a part of our personality. Yeah. And no. part of, it, financially, so, so it would have been good. Been yeah, good, oh, but, yeah, we could have been on holiday now, but I mean... Yeah, and, and that's so you the wouldn't other thing. So you wouldn't change it. You're on this mission, yeah, no, and you're still with the passion. Yeah, yeah. And these, oh, for sure. And these walls are full of music. So whenever we're building, we've always got something going on. Banging so, the what do you think? Yeah. Yeah. What's the house tunes? Gypsy. Oh, gypsy at the moment. Yeah, yeah it's gypsy. gypsy at the moment. Yeah. It's a... Uh, yeah, all around... Because we always constantly think, well, we could, we could have gone here, we could have done that, yeah. we could have done this, but actually it's... Um, we've learned... It's definitely been a, um, a... For me, it's definitely been a, a personality growth and a skill growth. It's amazing what, if you have to, what you can learn and mm. what you you can pick up. Yeah, it's amazing well. how far you can push your wife as well. Like we did till like three, four o'clock in the morning rendering these walls. Yeah, yeah. yeah the last night. Yeah, was, yeah. Lunch They're time very tough, these girls. So people, people out there that'd be watching this, you know, they're they're thinking about going off grid. It's all very daunting. You know, they've got to, they might have a new property. Thinking about buying a new property. From the process of you know buying the property. Building the shed, putting the off grid in, and then and, and then moving towards this build. What what sort of inspiration can you give people? What sort of tips can you give people about what to do, what not to do? You know, in that process. Break it down into segments. If you if you look at it in a, as a whole, it will just drown you. Um, learn the plans. Like really get to know the plans. Learn the plans, but definitely break it into segments. Uh, yeah, and also each segment, um, you have to find the rhythm. Yeah, that, like, yeah. Every, every section of this build has a rhythm. You've got to find the rhythm. Once you've found the rhythm and you stick with the rhythm, it's actually... Does that mean you guys are like jogging yeah, you, out here? Yeah, you get into a groove. Yeah, <laughs> that, that you're dancing the, as well. But like, yeah. like you say, get into the groove. say packing tyres. You, you learn. You, you, there's, a, there's a rhythm to pack tyres. And once you've found it, it becomes very easy. You've got to be yeah. in the flow. Yeah, you and, and, and yeah. you've got to know, you, who's, you've got to know what your, yourself is capable of and what, you, what bits you take and what bits are left for, for the experience. Because for, for yourself, you'll have a list of jobs and as long as you stick to your list of jobs and don't intervene in the other part of it, it works beautifully. Yeah. And I'd imagine too, not to be 
not to be fearful or not to put too many cognitive blocks in place for things that you don't know how to do and understand because you're going to learn all those things. Yeah, you don't and ever say you don't, you don't know. You didn't know how to weld when you started this, but no. you're a good welder now. Well, there must be a bunch of stuff like that. Oh, yeah. I'm a good welder on this build. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, well, you can read plans. You can read, can read plans. plans now. Yeah. I can lift rocks. Yeah, any rocks. Ro properly. Lifting rocks properly. Yeah. Uh, the, other, the other good point uh, is to always um, check and recheck measurements. It is one of the biggest... Yeah. Measure, measure again, and measure a third time because. And if you stuff up, which we do, oh, you can measure have. twice, stuff up, you can forgive yourself. Yeah. You gotta forgive yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and that's partly the reason we built out of steel because typically these are wood. Yeah. Because it's the whole eco yeah. idea. But we went wood because of there's white ants white around there. Yeah. And also, if, if it's done in steel and it's galvanised and the, all the edges are painted, it should still be in a hundred years time. Absolutely. And I think that's something nice to leave behind. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Can it, be, it could be here in 200. Well, it, 400, more. 500. Yeah, yeah, it could be. Yeah, it could be like an old English building that's been there like a thousand years I'll, and it's I'll, still going. I'll dig it up as a fossil going. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's some crazy yeah. people with nothing else to do. Yeah. <laughs> when they can get the recorder and, and, and pull sound out of um, out of pots and cement, they can pull all the tunes out of this wall. <laughs> They'll be playing gypsy. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Gypsy. Yeah, or chill step, chill step with chill Alan step, Watts. Yeah. Is that yeah. right? You listen yeah. to a lot yeah. of Alan yeah. Watts. Yeah. Well, this has been really enjoyable for us to visit and look, we can only say we've really enjoyed being here today. We're hoping you've enjoyed viewing this and understanding a little bit more. It's going to be epic is the word for when it's finished. So maybe we get a chance that might give us an excuse to come back to WA and check what this is going to be all about once the green room's in here and, yep. and it's all happening. So um, I look, for, look forward to that one. And uh, for now, I think we'll say over and out from Off Grid Earth. As a result of having a false sense of identity, we act in a way that is inappropriate to our natural environment. And when that inappropriate way of action is magnified by a very powerful technology, we swiftly begin to see the results of a profound discord between man and nature. As is well known, we are now in the process of destroying our environment as a result of an attempt to conquer it and master it. Our environment is not something other than ourselves. In assuming that it is, we have made a great mistake and are now paying the price for it. This episode of Off Grid Earth was proudly sponsored by Off Grid Energy Australia.